What's up binge watchers? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we'll be talking about an exciting new series. This is a German dystopic sci-fi series directed by Philip Cook and Florian Baxmeyer. The show is called Tribes of Europa. It's set in 2074. Around 50 years after a mysterious technological blackout, a supernatural event that caused Europe to be dispersed into tribes. And our main tribe here is called the Originis. And in it, we have three siblings named Liv, Keanu, and Elia, played by Henriette Confurius, Emilio Sacrea, and David Ali Rashid, who find themselves forging their own path as they find themselves separated and trying to save what's left for the future of Europe. Before we continue with this review, why don't you guys please show your support to the channel by hitting that like button and subscribing to us for our weekly reviews of movies and TV shows. Now I bring back to the channel my friend from Juice Talkies YouTube channel, Joshua Perez. Hello! Hey, what's up guys? What's up Kevin? Thanks for having me again, man. Okay, this feels like deja vu, right? If you, yeah. if you know what I mean. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, this show is a rip off of many shows and I am really compelled by the trailer so I would like to hear first your non-spoiler thoughts. Yeah, so when I spoke with you last week about it and you told me about the series and uh, you mentioned that you know this was from the producers of Dark, I immediately got excited because Dark happens to be one of my new favorite shows of all time. Even though that show had a way of making you feel smarter and dumber all at the same time, <laughs> um, but it was great and so I was really excited about this one. I actually enjoyed this series and we actually do have one of the actors from Dark, Oliver Minucci, as you know who played Ulrich in Dark. He has a role in this series and I think he is just fantastic. And I actually have a theory here. I think that in the 1950s timeline of Dark, when he got arrested and he was thrown in that mental institution, somewhere in there he found a black hole, jumped in it, and he ended up in this series. And I think that's why we're getting him in here. But uh, no, he, he plays this character named Moses. He's a bit of a douchebag type of character. He's a treasure hunter. He's only in it for the fame, being rich. He's an interesting character. So I'm, I'm really loving the role that he's playing in this series. And he happens to be my favorite of the characters in this show, mm -hmm. alongside you know the two other story arcs that we have with Elja and Keanu and uh, Liv. But overall, I think it's a really interesting series, like what you mentioned before, very similar to a lot of shows we've seen of this type, of this post-apocalyptic future. It could be a good and bad thing. It's not completely original, but it's still entertaining. There's still a lot to enjoy in this series. And honestly, you know, watching this after watching the first episode, I immediately, and this is something I mentioned to you also, that this show is very similar to The 100. So if, you know, we have any viewers that are fans of the CW show, The 100, there are a lot of ideas that are pulled from The 100 in this show because both series are dealing with the post-apocalyptic future. Both worlds have been overtaken by technology or war. A lot of the set pieces, the overall tone, the overall look, this series is very similar to that show. So I, I say if you're a fan of The 100, you're gonna feel right at home. Also, you're dealing with different factions, different tribes, one of them being the Crows, which I find to be very interesting. I have a nickname for them, the Asthma Tribe, because they're, <laughs> they're, they're really in, <laughs> there's this one scene in the very first episode, you know, when they're uh, overtaking one of the villages. They have these pumps. I said to myself, this is the future of Asthma, and uh, we're not going to call them the Crows, we're just going to call them the Asthma Tribe. But they're very similar costume design-wise and overall look to one of the tribes from the 100 down to the face paint on the eyes so they have a very similar look to some of those characters in the show some of the other ideas that I do like with this series is that they kind of tap into this whole idea of nature versus technology which we get hinted at at the beginning and I'm sure it's gonna get fleshed out in later seasons I wanted to kind of see that develop a little bit more throughout this six episode run but it's only six episodes and I feel like some people might find it a little bit convoluted or you know there's different tribes different sectors. I do wish it kind of ran a little bit longer. I felt like this season needed maybe a, a 10 mm, yeah. episode 
runtime because as soon as you start watching this series, the plot and everything, characters is coming at you, pedal to the metal. The first episode doesn't really spend too much time establishing world or the characters. I mean, you get a little bit of who the Origini tribe, because this is the tribe that our three main protagonists are a part of. And I want to see more of that world, and I'm sure that we will, but I feel like, you know, a lot of that stuff was just kind of rushed. We kind of had a ceremony, a rite of passage in that first episode. They kind of give us a hint of who these people are what they're about, where their characters are. But, you know, I kind of want to see that fleshed out a little bit. But, you know, like I said, it just, this series goes full force. It's like rapid fire through character development and its plot points and its villains. But I was, I was overall impressed. I, I think it's a really good series and I'm excited to see where they're going to go from here. For me, this is also a pretty solid series. And man, I just got excited when you throw your theory there about the... <laughs> possible connection to dark but I'm it could happen it might indulge you with that <laughs> uh, it's possibly unlikely <laughs> you know but you know <laughs> we can't help it okay yeah, yeah. Uh, what can I say you kept mentioning the 100 I haven't seen that show and I am compelled to see that show after you've said that and just because I have a lot of friends who are recommending that show I am already forgiving when it comes to dystopic shows being derivative because mm -hmm. it came to a point that We've already done so much that the only challenge is here is to how to make it fresh, you know, and exactly. how to m make your own identity. And I can draw comparisons from the Hunger Games just because yeah. of the appearance of the streets here. Everything is bleak and also maybe Mad Max and, you know, a lot of shows. But in terms of setup, I'm thinking about Game of Thrones just because we have here a group of siblings who yes. got separated and hopefully it won't take eight seasons before they get reunited <laughs> but yeah it's really interesting to see the paths of this protagonist because these are pov characters and the show ushers us into different factions and what's better is even though the show feeds you with a lot of world building concepts it surprisingly feels light when compared to dark it's very cerebral yeah, and you need to focus everything you need to write notes sometimes but in here, there's still comfort on knowing where its characters are going to be led. Just to see how these characters evolve as they encounter new characters. We're talking about the crows here. I find them silly at first. We're talking about post-apocalyptic and they have this designer leather and the black <laughs> eyeliner. I felt yeah. like they're over the top. And one of the leaders here, Vavara, she's wearing this Lady Gaga heels. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I can't help but laugh at their appearance, but they're the most interesting out of all of these tribes. I find a lot of ironies in here. They love to party, they are into slavery, but at the same time, they also have codes like the samurai code they want to die honorably and also they never lie so that's an interesting mix of values in here and but when it comes to the origins we mostly get their background on episode one and i'm glad that the show quickly moves like okay we already got the plot points in this specific location let's move on to the next and it kind of breezes through the chapters but a part of me also thinks that I would have also liked more episodes build more of the character relationships because there's going to be some romances involved there's going to be some complex master slave relationships which we're going to discuss later oh, yeah. and <laughs> I felt like there's more impact on those relationships had we had 10 episodes but you know this show is trying to be internationally appealing by making all the proceedings that fast and I find it odd however that there are some modern soundtracks that they've played in some of the scenes personally it kind of takes me out of it but you know yeah. I guess it also has to do with appealing to an international audience actually it's interesting that you mentioned the music because the first couple of episodes I noticed a lot of the music was very similar to dark if you go back and listen to some of that electronica dark brooding type of soundtrack that dark had like we had a little bit of that in those first couple of episodes and it actually got me thinking that maybe we have the same composer yeah for that music i'm going to look that up but earlier you touched on the themes about nature versus technology this show also has depth into it though not as deep as the sociopolitical themes of Game of Thrones, we have here, I love that the series poses this question that 
Are you willing to give up your identity and your values in exchange of belonging to a new environment? Because this is what the show is all about. It's about the disbanding and forming of new allegiances and, you know, uh, try to survive and friend for your own self. So this is the main challenge for the siblings here. I pretty much enjoyed how this show takes its characters to different factions and challenge their values. I guess there's a lot of questions that has been posed set before the events of this show and by that ending and we're going to discuss more of that later but oh, yes. you know, I'm going to conclude now for this non-spoiler review and give my rating. I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5. This is a pretty solid season for me the performances are all competent enough this is handsomely and lavishly produced and if you have that itch for that post-apocalyptic show go ahead and see this it's just six episodes so this is an easy binge and yeah i would love to see more episodes in the future yeah so i'm gonna have to completely agree with you i was going to give this a four my only complaint was the runtime i feel like we could have did with maybe like a couple more episodes making it a 10 episode run but if you have that hunger for this dystopian type of of series and if like I mentioned if you're a fan of the 100 you're gonna love this show and so I'm gonna go with a four it's exciting there's some violent moments there's some interesting character motivations as well and I want to see what's gonna happen next season so I'm pretty excited yeah I forgot to mention there's also gore content here for those who are looking for that because things really get graphic uh, but now really we're going graphic. to talk about more of our spoiler thoughts in this spoiler section if you haven't seen this show yet I suggest you pause this video and return to us later first we're talking about the character arcs he has the most compelling arc here he has the most sinister and he went through the most ordeal here let's talk first about Keanu yes. he started as an originist then turned into a slave factory worker and then to a sex slave and then at the end of the episode he became a crow and his name is now Tarok. I'm glad we're actually starting with him because of the three character arcs that one was my favorite. I felt like every scene that we had with him and Vavara it felt like you were walking on eggshells like and she's a very interesting villain because she's so unpredictable like I, I feel like at any moment she can <laughs> snap and just you're, you're dead just like that so anytime that we had those moments and scenes with them I was kind of biting my nails on the edge of my seat I'm like oh man oh man what is she gonna do next but he has suffered the most especially with the way it ended and that was like a big shocker I kind of in some way saw that coming but super shocking there's some really great moments there because we get a little bit more of the crows and you know kind of behind the scenes and you know Vavara is a very interesting character in how she runs this prison system Vavara here oh my god <laughs> I can't help sometimes laugh at her I get tense but at the same time yeah. It's just one of the over-the-top characters that I'm talking about yeah. <laughs> along with their leader. I forgot his name. We rarely get to have those psychosexual villains. So it's... Just... Yeah, it is. And, and talk about gender swapping because there's this rape scene and it's interesting. Most of the time in film and TV, when we get those very explicit scenes, it's usually the other way around. Yeah. So it took me by surprise, actually, that scene. <laughs> Go watch Spartacus. We have a lot of cis men being objectified in that show. Oh, I was that's reminded right. yes, by Spartacus. that. I was reminded yeah. of that show when he went up against his father. Mm -hmm. Even though I already saw it coming, it's still heartbreaking to see that play out. By the end of it, I think the way they set up this character, there is a chance that he will come against the paths of his brothers and sister, Liv and Elia. And mm -hmm. I was thinking that is he playing a double agent at this point? Clearly, there's much hatred for the crowds and he's just using that battle to gain a status so that maybe he can purchase his father as a slave and then they can go but now that his father is dead and to his knowledge his siblings are already dead so the question now is what is still connecting him to be in the originist tribe once you're in that culture you won't feel it that quick that you're changing to become someone who you're not and I think that's the route here for Keanu I feel like we're gonna get a lot more darker moments with him he's killed his own father I mean that can't be good for him psychologically and mentally because going back from the very first episode he had some relationship issues 
with his father. His father didn't favor him. He favored Liv over Keanu, so he felt like yeah. he needed something to prove himself. But, you know, now that his father died, you know, it's just going to kind of turn things around. Another scene that was interesting was that whole confrontation with his father, that whole showdown. You see Vivara up in the audience, and, and she's crying. And I just, I mean, that just got me thinking that maybe, possibly, they're planting the seeds of redemption with her character. Um, it, it could be. From what I saw in that moment and some of the other scenes that we had where they were both in the same car and, you know, she was talking about her past, the battle that she had, the same exact tournament style setting and what made her a crow. Maybe she'll kind of be redeemed. And I, I want to see more of El Capitan. El Capitan is basically the one above her. He's the one that we see in a couple scenes who is running the show. So, you know, we'll see where it goes from here. Yeah. I wouldn't be mad if Varvara gets a redemption. Though I miss that part where Varvara is crying. If you go back and look at that scene, like literally right after he killed his father, it's just that one shot of her up in the audience. And yeah, you could see her tear up a little bit, a little bit of water under her eyes. And at that moment, that's when I kind of knew that oh. there's just a little bit of good somewhere in her. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Oh, that's nice to hear that she has a heart because she has a monologue <laughs> here that she told about her backstory. And speaking of backstory, I think some Sometime we're going to get a flashback on what happened on that yes. event called the Black December. So I'm really looking forward to that. But first, let's move on to another character here. We have here Liv, who I'd like to call Katniss Everdeen because her circumstances <laughs> are very much similar. She's plucked from the comfort of her family and she finds herself forging an alliance with the Crimsons, who are the last standing European army and they are here to bring back civilization and in a surprising twist of events she decided to forge a path of her own and she finds herself with this new tribe called the Femen tribe which I assume yes. are all female tribes so I think that's interesting because we're getting more and more tribes here and yeah what do you think about Liv's arc and I guess the romance that she had with David <laughs> yeah that <laughs> seemed obligatory that, <laughs> that came out of nowhere like I, I felt like that needed a little bit more time to be fleshed out like I'm not completely sold on it it's interesting that you mentioned Katniss from the Hunger Games because she even looks like her she even has that whole yeah. look and you know some of the same weapons <laughs> even the backdrops and setting that she's in is really reminiscent of you know the Hunger Games it's gonna be interesting to see what happens to her because I feel like we are gonna get some kind of confrontation with her and out of nowhere lover <laughs> we're gonna have another scene with them too and I don't know how it's gonna go down it's interesting that you mentioned the other tribe as well I think we're gonna get that in season two so looking forward to seeing you know more of this world and more of these villages and that's gonna be really interesting she had some badass moments here when she outsmarted Grieta the crowd general and I almost wish that Grieta remained alive for season two because I kind of like their dynamic that they started uh, as Me too. nemesis yeah. and I would like to see them forging a friendship so I was a bit sad that Grieta died but you know I guess the show wanted to move on to other things and maybe somewhere down the road, Liv will meet the family of Grieta, who knows? Uh, <laughs> yeah, and maybe, yeah. I think let's move on to another sibling. The youngest one we have, Elia. There's this McCoffin. It's a mysterious box which can transform into a weapon or can be used as a portal. My theory is Atlantis is located somewhere in the water. So no surprise given the name of the race there, Atlanteans. <laughs> and yeah. we see this huge elevator, I think. It is implied that the Atlanteans have maintained their technology. They were unaffected by the Black. December so it only makes sense that they live underground however another theory that I have because we're talking about here the creators of dark maybe there's some time travel involved maybe they live in the past maybe they live in an alternate dimension uh, my that mind be, gets yeah. imaginative when it comes to those things but what do you think he was another character arc that I really like like what I mentioned earlier you know the actor who played Ulrich from dark he's my favorite character in this show I think he's also a really great actor I do want to see more of of what happened in Black December. I think those secrets are going to get revealed with his arc. Another thing that's interesting is, is that whole cube thing. I like the fact that, you know, it can manifest itself into a weapon, GPS. Yeah. It's, it's it's like the Amazon Echo 3000. Like, <laughs> this is the future of Amazon Echo with GPS, aug augmented reality, and it's wireless. It's completely wireless. So 
But he's a really interesting character and I've loved that whole dynamic with him in Moses. He's a scumbag, but for some reason he's taken a liking to this character. I wanna see what's going on, you know, with this whole Black December event. The cube does give us a hint that something is definitely coming. And we're gonna definitely find out more about that race, more about that tribe, how they survived. They weren't affected by everything that happened with the technological warfare, or whatever it was that happened in December. I really wanna see how that's gonna play out. I forgot to talk about Moses here. He reminded me of Han Solo. He's like the German yes. Han Solo, right? I was gonna say that too. He's identical, almost identical to that character. One can easily call him a ripoff character, but I'm not mad at it because the show me still neither. maintains its identity. And as a whole, I can say the same because this is a compelling watch for me. Okay, and that's it for our non-spoiler and spoiler review of Tribes of Europa. Have we missed something? Show them on the comment sections down below. Also, if you enjoyed watching this video, hit that like button and subscribe to us for weekly reviews of movies and TV shows. Joshua, thanks you for joining me in this discussion. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until then, see you on the next Thanks, one. guys.